1995, people, and with the start of a new console generation, we were thrust into the new and untapped realm of 3D. With the arrival of the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn, true 3D gaming was now available outside of the arcade. So this week, we ask, did you ever play Ridge Racer? The home version of Ridge Racer was released in Japan in 1994 as a launch title for the original Sony PlayStation. The version for North America and Europe was released in 1995. The game played a major role in establishing the new system and giving it an early edge over its nearest competitor, the Sega Saturn. Ridge Racer was Namco's answer to Sega's Daytona USA and Sega Rally in the arcade, but also in the home market. With the former exclusives on the Saturn, Namco started its long history with Sony by making Ridge Racer the premier racing launch title for the PlayStation. For many of us, it was the first true 3D game we'd ever played on a console. Thus, it blew us away and left us wanting our own PlayStation under the TV. The graphics were much cleaner, smoother and less glitchy than its Sega rivals. With more happening on screen with smoother frame rates, it was easy to see the PlayStation at the edge. Also new was the controller. Anyone 20 years or younger will probably wonder, what the hell is this? But before analog, dual shock, six axis and touch pads, this was the PlayStation controller. It was a sexy piece of kit, showing that Sony was serious in its endeavour, but controlling the Tracer was far from straightforward. So let's delve into the game a little bit. Now, once you start, you have your choice of um, track, yes there's only one, with varying difficulty levels. Then you choose your car. Each with its own pros and cons, the cars looked great. You can also unlock more based on your performance. Now off to the track. Well the track looks great, pretty and smooth with some in-game advertisements thrown in just for the hell of it. Basically the racing is a race to sixth gear, then stay there and drive around the course the best you can. The corners are okay but you soon start to realise that break corner turn won't get you around half the corners. This is where the main driving mechanic becomes apparent, drifting. Now drifting is rock hard in real life, difficult to simulate even today and only started to get kind of right with the later rally games. So 1995 plus early 3D plus no analogue or force feedback equals I guess what I'm trying to say is it was kind of hard, but it was fun going through the learning curve. And once you got the hang of it, it was pretty satisfying indeed. Now one cool trick with Ridge Racer is while you're playing, pause the game, take out a CD and replace it with an audio CD. Close the lid, carry on playing with your own CD soundtrack in the background. No idea how it did this, but it was pretty satisfying at the time. Now after Ridge Racer, we got a sort of sequel in Ridge Racer Revolution. New cars, apparently, and a new set of um, track. Along with improved graphics, this was more Ridge Racer for those who wanted it. Also more adverts, but why not? Come in, After Revolution was Type 4. This went on a bit of a Gran Turismo tangent, but if you got the first edition of the game, it came with a disc called Ridge Racer Turbo, or Ridge Racer High Spec Mode in Europe. It was the first Ridge Racer again, but on its own disc, but this was turbocharged, 60 frames a second, full vibration support, it was the best version of Ridge Racer you could get on a console. Ridge Racer is all but forgotten nowadays, but for those who can say yes, I did play Ridge Racer, they know how important it was in establishing the PlayStation brand for the first few years with quality, speed and style. So did you ever play Ridge Racer? If not, check it out. 